It's already been part of developing the first COVID vaccine with Pfizer to now working on finding one for Lyme disease and, and so much more. It's the Upstate Global Health Institute's new East Syracuse site, which will be home to clinical trials for new vaccines and treatments for a whole range of infectious diseases. Joining us now, the director, Dr. Stephen Thomas. Always good to have you. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Um, what, do you, what do you like about this new lab? So the lab itself and the work you do isn't necessarily new, but your surroundings are. That's right. Yeah, well, I, the first thing that I like about it is that for the first time in many, many years, the entire group can be together, right? We've been, you know, at Upstate, there, there is so much going on uh, and space is really kind of limited. And so uh, this new space has allowed us to all come together. And it's not just laboratory, right? It's it's clinical operations, it's education and training, it's it's everybody. Uh, uh, Dr. Tangamani, who you've spoken mm -hmm. to before, his operation will stay where it is because it's a high containment <laughs> operation, but, uh, but we're all together. That's one thing I love. The other thing that I really love is that it is such a better space for the volunteers. Uh -huh. We have plenty of parking. We're on the first floor. There's no tickets or anything like that. You just, you park, you walk in, uh, you do you do your business with us and then uh, and then you can leave and it's you know very closely located to Carrier Circle and 481 and all these other uh, uh, roads so um, there's a lot to love. Good. We'll, we'll get to some of the volunteering opportunities in a minute. But like, what sort of things are you working on? We talked about uh, a vaccine for Lyme disease. What what else is uh, at, at work out there? Right. Yeah. So it's not just the vaccine in regards to Lyme disease. We have a um, a whole uh, tick. Tick exposure study that's been uh, going on. We enrolled a couple of hundred people into that. Um, we have a number of flu vaccine trials that are ongoing and some that are coming on. We have these uh, combination trials, so COVID and flu in the same vaccination. We have a lot of dengue work. So we do a lot of work with the Department of Defense and the University of Maryland. Um, and so we have those trials and those are always uh, uh, ongoing with opportunities to uh, to participate um, and, a, and a smattering of other of other trials. So we have HIV drug trials, which are going on that, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that Dr. Reddy uh, um, uh, spearheads. So yeah, a lot, a lot of exciting stuff. How do you, how do you even decide? Because there's obviously so much out there that you could do. How do you decide what to do? Because it's not just to benefit Central New York, it's potentially to benefit the world, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, first and foremost, we would really like to work on things that are of uh, direct interest to our community. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, you know, uh, HIV countermeasures, uh, dengue for our, you know, U.S. service members up mm -hmm. at uh, Fort Trump who deploy all over the world and, and are put in harm's way. Um, the Lyme uh, work, of course. Uh, but then, yeah, it's the it's the larger uh, national and global mission as it relates to uh, to influenza um, and other communicable diseases. Diseases. Uh, and, and, you know, the next the next generation of COVID vaccines are also um, uh, in the pipeline to be tested and we're going to be part of that as well. So uh, so local community first and then uh, national and global um, priorities after that. This may be the last one because I'm going to lump a few into one. You need volunteers yeah. for all these. So who, who do you need? Yeah. How can people help? Um, they get compensated for this. What goes in, into doing these generally? Yeah, so you know, I, I you know, I told your colleague the other day when you go to your doctor's office or a pharmacy or urgent care wherever you go, those vaccines and those drugs and those tests that they do on our our blood and and other tests, um, they're there because volunteers decided to step up and participate in uh, uh, in research and to be volunteers. And so without volunteers, none of this happens. None of this work can can go forward. So volunteers are absolutely. Um, essential. Uh, you know, anyone can come on through our website or they can call uh, um, and the number's on the website and they can call and we can tell them about all the opportunities that are available. Uh, people may receive uh, mailings from us. Yeah. Uh, our recruiter, yeah, our recruiters are at lots of different sporting events and at lots of different community events around uh, central New York. Um, and yes, uh, so when you say people get compensated, uh, we do provide people um, uh, money to help 
uh, uh, offset the cost of participation, right? We can't have people spending money on gas and, you know, if they have to eat out or park or things like that. Yeah. Uh, and so, yes, yeah, so uh, we do compensate people for expenses associated with volunteering. Uh, but, uh, and we make sure of this, it is it is not a level of compensation that should incentivize yeah. right. you to participate. Right. Um, it's just not, it's just not uh, equitable in that way. Uh, so really, it, the people who participate, they really are, they're um, they're making a decision to try to advance uh, science and to 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 try to help out their uh, uh, their community both locally and globally. So, lots of uh, lots of opportunities, Dr. Thomas. Good to chat with you as usual. We'll see you again, I'm sure, really soon. Thank you very much. Take care.